What's going on guys? It's me again back here uh, in my garage. I've been another project I've been wanting to do. Been putting it off for a little bit, but I've got my side by side back here. Uh, this is my Kawasaki Terex. Um, it's a 2021. I got it last year um, and I really haven't put any accessories on it. The only thing I put on uh, probably mirrors. Um, but when I got it, it had a windshield and a roof on it. Um, been putting off putting that on a winch though. Uh, so I finally went to Harbor Freight. They had a deal for their Badlands, uh, their Badlands 5,000. So I went ahead and picked it up. I think I got it for 170 bucks there. Um, and you'll have to excuse the mess in my garage. I'm sorry. Got the tractor, been doing all kinds of stuff. So, uh, picked it up about 170 bucks. Um, and then I just went ahead and pulled the trigger to get it and i also got uh everything else for the wiring kits uh i got uh some uh connectors uh, heat shrink and also got a heat shrink gun um i'm actually a little bit intimidated by this because i've never done something i don't know i just it's going to take me time because with wiring and stuff i'm just still pretty new with uh when it comes to anything that's automobile related machinery now in the house it's a little bit different i can turn off power here and there but nevertheless i've been a little bit intimidated by it but i'm um, just going to go through it and show y'all how somebody that has no experience of installing a winch whatsoever of uh, putting it on here i did do research I, I love youtube on this where i can just sit and watch stuff um just to save me some time so with the badlands winch it comes with a base plate and this base plate uh, will not mount on my Kawasaki Terex. So uh, following a guy and he actually told me, I think this is KFI makes a, uh, a mount that's already uh, compatible with this. It even comes with the directions. It says it's for a Kawasaki Terex. So it's supposed to be real simple. It's just gonna bolt four bolts onto the bottom of it. And this is gonna mount right up under here like so i'll end up taking this plate off and mounting this on four bolts and then i got a perfect mount specifically for this so hopefully i'll get going here i didn't do the whole unboxing for this because i mean it's self-explanatory with unboxing and everybody else does their videos and they pull out each little wire and say what it's for um this has just got all the wirings and it's color coded so red goes to red blue to blue yellow to yellow um, so we'll try, try to get at it. So what I'm going to do first, uh, it's pretty heavy uh, with this cable on here. I know automatically that I'm not going to use this cable. I'm going to the synthetic rope. Uh, I did buy the uh, Harbor Freight synthetic rope. Uh, it was like 40 bucks and it came with a rope, a clip, and a, a fair link on the front of it. But I went on Amazon. That was only rated 3,000. Um, and I went on Amazon. This one was 25 bucks and it was rated for like 8,500. So I just went ahead and spent the 25 bucks to get this. I'm gonna return the other one back to Harbor Freight and save me a couple bucks. Well, I'm still gonna have to buy a fair link to put on the, the mount on the front of it. But this is just the unboxing of the new rope that I will be putting on here. Uh, but I wanna get that weight off so I can sit here and not be fighting the weight on here. So I'm just gonna unspool this. Hopefully it'll come off the piece. So I've unspooled it all, that was really simple. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do here is get an Allen wrench unscrew this, uh, the screw, and then pull the rest of the cable out. And then I'm just gonna leave it like this. Um, and then when I'm ready, I'm gonna re-spool this uh, once it's already mounted on there. I just rather have that less weight on there um, to be able to manage it.
go. Alright, so next what I want to do is I want to take this base plate off um, the bottom of this uh, and put the, where did I put it, it's 10 millimeter. So what that does, it gives us access under here where you got your mount on top. And it's got four holes. Just line those up. It's supposed to line straight up and then I'll be able to mount it straight on. I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on it. Always so. so. Just gonna put some blue Loctite on the bolts and just snug it right in and then the mount will already be in. So, I'm gonna back up even further. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and just put this winch on here first and then I'll mount it. Let's see how this is gonna sit on here. I guess it'll sit on just like that. Holes are lining up back here. Oh, so I'll set y'all down. This is So now I'm gonna take this over. Bring it over here. If you know Texas Pete ain't actually from Texas, you're in Wolf Nation. Alright, so just found out this is gonna go in one way. You have to put this side in first before you can get to sit on here. So and I also remember them saying this blue terminal or for it to mount, it's gonna be hitting right here on the inside. So what they did was get a hammer and they just dented it in just a little bit there. I don't mind it. I don't think it's gonna mess up the structure with it, but uh, that's what I'm gonna end up doing. I wanna take it off and let me make sure the holes are lined up first. up in the market I just sit here I mark the outside corners of it but that's bolts actually the one I need to go in so So y'all see I lined up the holes, but this right here, I just wanted to be able to, once I get the boot to put over here, the wire, the connector, put the boot, I still have room right there. So I won't be able to take this off and on, 
while this is mounted. I guess I'll just have to unbolt the four bolts, slide this out like this, and then I can put my wires and connectors on it. So I can live with that. Um, I don't want to put any more, even though this is, I, like I'm like no mechanic or anything, but I, this is pretty stout. That little dent in there, especially, I got a brace here, goes all the way around, another brace. So that, I don't think I compromised really anything to it. I don't plan on busting anything anyways, but never know. I like to ride uh, pretty safe also. I'm not one of those that likes to tear up, tear up what I have. Uh, I'll be honest with you, the main reason why I really want this winch is I've noticed in the winter time, I mean, of course last winter, this thing's amazing in the snow. Um, but of course, if I go down a ditch and couldn't get out, but also for a lot of people that get stuck out here, I live not too far from a uh, uh, four lane, what is it, four lane highway? Yeah. So be able to help other people out or work the wife or just anything. So I think it's a good tool to have on, on here. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get my blue and yellow cables, go ahead and connect those on here. Like I said, the only downfall of this is this blue right here, this terminal being so close. So if I ever needed to take this off the terminal, I mean, worse comes worse. Just take out four bolts, cant it a little bit, and then I can take it off. So I think that's the best I can do with trying to mount this actual Badlands 5000 um, onto this machine. So I can work with that. So I guess I'm gonna end up fishing those wires through here. I've seen people mount this uh, like I said I called it the solenoid um, I guess the brains of the thing um, I've seen people mounting it here which is nice I mean it's easy to access right here I've seen people mount it onto this little bracket as well um, which is also pretty good. So this one only takes, I'm gonna mount it with some plastic screws. But if you're tapping into metal here, you'd need to go ahead and tap you a, uh, a little hole with a drill and then get some screws, maybe some self-tapping after that. And it makes it where 
you can slide it on as well on each side. So I'm gonna figure that out here for a second. And then uh, once I decide what I'm gonna do, I'll uh, show y'all how I've done it. All right, guys. So I decided I'm gonna put it right here in the middle, uh, right above the fan. I went ahead and uh, marked it, the silver marker where I'm gonna drill. These two small little screws um, actually came with the Badlands winch. And it's for that solenoid, so um, I wanna use it. I actually, it's very hard, but I think I'm able to get my hand up under the bottom of it and be able to hold the, uh, the back of the nut um, so I can screw this in to this, but I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on this as well. And uh, hopefully, that's fingers crossed is what's gonna happen. If not, then I'm gonna get a bigger uh, thread, maybe a wood thread screw which is, I know it's a big no-no, but that might be my way to do it. So, all right. Get at it. Damn it. Uh-oh. Sound like the wife broke something. You good? So I made the holes a little bit small. I'm hoping I can get this to thread through just to give it a little bit more. So what I have here are some uh, roofing screws that I have for metal roofing. It's got a little rubber gasket on the bottom of it so when you seal it, it's supposed to help uh, so water doesn't get into it. But this is a little bit bigger than the hole hopefully and I can get that. That's snug. A company that's protecting tomorrow by driving sustainability today. Coventa is currently interviewing for CDL drivers, diesel mechanics, processing technicians, field chemists, and lab hack supervisors. Oh, man, it's going anywhere right now. Just hopefully a lot of vibration and stuff like that won't loosen up and come out. I'll just have to keep a check on it. Alrighty. So. Yellow. Yeller. Let's be real. Mopping is a hassle. You have to fill the bucket, pushing the wet, heavy mop around, then cleaning the mop when you're done so it doesn't grow bacteria. A hassle on top of a hassle. All right, guys, so last night, dinner, uh, I just called it quits after that. Uh, but this afternoon, um, Hudson was actually sick all day, so, so he wasn't able to go to school, and plus he didn't go to his baseball game tonight. So that gave me an afternoon to be able to get some st the work on it, uh, which is very rare. So I came straight home, and I started tackling on it, and I've just, I didn't video me doing every single wire, but I want to explain to you real quick. Y'all got the gist of it uh, when I was showing it, but everything is color coded. Um, so it was very easy to connect these on here. Uh, I will say it was a little difficult with this uh, wire coming off here, which I guess is your switch. Um, to get these top screws in or after I put these in to get these screws on so it's probably best to put those on first maybe or have all this mounted to here before you mount it into this uh, inside the Terex side by side but anywho um, I was able to run my two lines down through here um, I had a flashlight where did my flashlight go I use my phone light So you'll see in here, ran red, the positive, right negative. Um, I was able to put a zip tie all the way around this brace to keep this uh, circuit box uh, from rattling. Then I just 
spun it all up and I zip tied everything uh, pretty tight so it's not moving around and it's not loose and going to snag on anything. Those are simple though, red, black, connect those in there. I did find out this, this battery's way back in here so you have to reach in there pretty good. But I did also secure my yellow and blue lines coming up from the winch and coming up. So this is what uh, guys on YouTube, which I love so much to be able to watch them and figure out stuff. So I already knew which, uh, which fuse, which line that I needed to hook up. It was one of the first two will be your ignition switch. I mean, once your ignition switch turns on, it gives it power. So I went ahead, pulled it, pulled this out, it snaps in. I just pulled it right up and then I went straight to the first and the second one. The second one had a little bit longer uh, cable in it. So I just went ahead and used it. Uh, and what I didn't do from what everybody uh, that I've seen on YouTube, the simplest way is to get one of these uh, connectors where you can just sit it in there put both wires in it and then what you'll do is you'll close it or snap it down and close it um, and then that just gives you a connection to both wires that's the simplest way but also if it starts rattling if there's any connection that or doesn't make connection which I mean in theory it's just wouldn't be that much that it'll uh, separate and then you'll won't have a connection so what I did was I ended up this <laughs> very carefully I spliced these wires, just put one of these crimpers on and crimped, crimped them in. So I've got coming from the solenoid, my yellow, I mean the red cord comes in. I twist it together with that uh, second wire on this side. And then the other one that's coming from the fuse box come in, just stuck them in each side and crimped it. I want to get some electrical tape and tape around it. I couldn't get a heat shrink around it because it was too small in both directions. So um that's how i tackled that um and i'll say i spent about maybe two hours this afternoon um setting this up uh, i could have gone faster if i knew exactly what i was doing well i i feel like i know what i'm doing it's just taking time with my fat fingers and i don't know how many times i've dropped a screw down in there best bet is to get one of those pans that are magnetic so you can take your screws there or sit them i don't know I was just having a rough time, but I wanted to tackle this tonight and I'm going to show y'all um, to test it. So once I got the switch on there, sorry guys, I might end up, so this cable right here is what's hooked up to the solenoid. It's the small little screws at the top. Um, and it comes off into a Y shape. This right here is for your hard, I, I would say hard, but your straight line for your uh, handheld to go straight into the cable. But for the uh, rocker switches, that's what this connector's for. So you'll connect the end of the rocker switch with this, run that cable in to the dash and then pop it in there. So that's my probably tomorrow's project. Well, not tomorrow. I got to uh, practice and stuff, but my next, when I get time to get in here. Uh, but I wanted to test it. So I came up here. White to white, I connected it. I don't hear it running, but I'll turn the keys switch. Turn it on. Have it and so that right there is music to my ears. So now I know I got all my connections correct. Now I just take my time. I've already tidied up most of the stuff, but I'm gonna leave everything as is, go in hang out with the family a little bit for bedtime. And then next time I come out here, I'll try to tackle the dash 
Um, simple concept. It's just, just take time, all right, and try not to mess up my stuff. So, y'all stay tuned. All right, guys. So this is day three uh, of me working on this. Not consecutive three days, but finally got some time this afternoon after work. Uh, so all I have to do now is take this front panel off. Um, and I've got four cutouts here, or they're not cutouts, but four uh, places where I can put the rocker switch. Um, so if I can get this off, I've watched, like I said, other videos, people say you can pinch it and it come loose, but I've that's not coming off as easy for me. So what I'm doing is I'm actually using a flathead screwdriver. And if I get a little bit of space here, I'm just turning it and I'm, I'll twist the screwdriver just to see if I can get a little bit of leverage to see if it just, uh, pop out because all I think there are are some quick connects and that's just keeping it snapped in I'm just trying to do it easy let's see what we got here so I don't break any of them oh it actually came off relatively really easy so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight of them and uh, none of them are broken off. So that's pretty cool. So what I want to do is uh, I want to put my, I'm going to cut out this first one here. So I'm going to take it over here to the bench where I can see a little bit better in the light. I say bench. Uh, put it on the back of the gator. So here we go. Like I said, I've seen people use just a, a razor blade and just score it out. I'm going to be a little bit risky on this time. I don't think it's that bad of a time, but I want to use my uh, rotary tool. Um, and just do it real quick. Save me a little bit of time, but I'll also uh, have a little bit of control of it as well. So. Here goes nothing. There we go. Perfect. Pop right in. Nice. All right. So now we got to do is fish this through. Fish this through the dash. Which. Doesn't look like there's much room, but I can see some. I can see some. Oh, I'll show you all this. I can see some daylight in this section right here. So that's where I'm going to try to fish it through. Oh, right in there. So I'm going to fish it through this left hand side, right up under the. Uh, uh, Four-wheel drive and the ignition switch Looks like I got a pretty good access right there on the left-hand side So Man, I'm doing horrible today Holding y'all up And there are this There we go Right here So this it's going to connect into here. It's one of the days. Trying to get it to where y'all can see it too. It's a little simple. But. Uh, top, top. I should just snap right in. 
It's snapped in together. I'm going to pull in as much as I can. snap this back in I guess the smartest thing is to check the power yeah. so I'm gonna go in and get the key before I snap this in just make sure everything's working so all right guys went and got my key all right got some power to it Let's see if we can hear it yes sir what I'm talking about so that was really simple to be honest with you wait a minute it's in there snug look at that out well, and really secured in there so now I have sitting here I know I got the handheld remote that's connected to it so that is I mean that's pretty much it guys what I am gonna do in the future is I'm gonna get a wireless remote um, and what that entails from Harbor Freight is where I would connect the handheld remote um, which I'm actually gonna do here in a second so I can re-spool the uh, synthetic line but all it does is it connects to this portion inside here and then it just sits in here the wireless connector and then you have the remote in your hand and it sends a signal so I'll probably do that in the future I think they're about 50 bucks baby I'm um, at Harbor Freight so maybe next pay paycheck um, I'll get it and then uh, yeah be able to do it I'll show y'all real quick so I was having trouble trying to get this uh, rope in. So once I got it started, I was able to use the number three Allen that I had and I helped fishing it, pushing it down through there. And now it's come through the bottom, I can see it. So I'm just gonna tighten up this Allen screw and then I'll be able to uh, wind it on there. All right, guys, my uh, fairling finally came in. Um, so I was able to bolt it on. It actually came with no bolts. So these were extra bolts that I had from the actual winch that I did not have to use because I bought this mounting bracket. So it bolted on real simple. I guess it's just to keep the synthetic rope from shredding or tearing on the edges. But this is the overall finished product. It's dark out here, so I'm gonna put a little light in here. So that's it. Um, very happy with it, actually. So, I appreciate y'all watching this. Hopefully, this helps somebody else out. Um, yeah, y'all take it easy.